real quick, this is my alt channel, and my main channel is in danger every day of getting banned as a result of talking with these amazing people very candidly. So please do me a favor and subscribe down below. Helps me out a lot. Get the hell on it, dog on it. Armaguard says Nina tried organizing an intervention for Nick. Well, since Nina's already like talked about it, I never really talked about it. I said there was kind of something in the works, but yeah, Nina did message me and I messaged Drex and we were kind of all, we were kind of all making, trying to make something work. This was two days before the arrest. I think it was a Tuesday and I was going to fly out there. Um, Drex was going to go over to see uh, to, to Nick's house, check on him. And then I was going to fly out there. Um, and all, we were going to, you know, we were just playing it by ear, man, because that was, it was right after his like fucked up stream. And uh, then, of course, he got arrested the next day. One so. of the funniest streams I've ever seen him do, I got admit. It was uh, world class. Yeah, it was 10 out of 10. I watched the whole thing. I, I shit you not. I was watching it, and I had a girl over at my house. Uh, you know, fucking Jesse. You know Jesse Cecil. Um, she, we were sitting there and, like, literally audibly gasping and, like, being like, holy girl. shit, every 20 seconds. I it was, was laughing my ass off. It was wild. <laughs> and then that part where he just stops moving and starts, like, pretending to masturbate, like, DSP. Oh, my God. What a what a beautiful I I'll always I'll always love it. It's part of my intro now. <laughs> so now here's what we were talking about the other night though, is they the, and they had to get a battering ram because he wasn't letting <laughs> them in. At yeah. that time, why weren't they flushing stuff? Why <clears throat> they're not professional? No, no. Yeah. Like, see, so you better no, seriously, the like honestly, why like you know they're coming in, like that's well, like what I'm telling you, dude, like most people have not lived a lifestyle such as yours, see. So a lot of people don't know what to do. Like, remember how Carrie Fisher died? She died from too much heroin. Plane. No, yeah. no. The chicken play Princess Leia. Yeah, she died on a plane, didn't she? No, she died from a drug overdose. Yeah, on she a was plane. Doing, she was doing heroin, and then she tried to level off of coke, but she took too much and killed herself. Not Man. too many people understand the delicate balance. Well, <laughs> that's, that's a... Uh... That, that's that's usually how people die from this because they're like they're stressed out they haven't done it in a while and they're like yeah. fine i'm gonna cheat and i'm yeah. gonna do it but if uh -huh. i'm gonna do it i want it to count oh yeah so, yeah so they do what they did the last time they did it but they are clean or they've mm -hmm. been clean for a few months and their system it goes into complete fucking shock from from you know, they're like, fuck it. If I'm going to cheat, I want to get high. I don't want to do something. Bro, from now on, when I have vendors, I'm calling you because you're describing I'll talk exactly you through how it, I go yeah. through shit. Like, yeah. I literally turn on Nine Inch Nails, Mr. Self-Destruct, <laughs> and I just go hard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. It's like I, a fucking, um, what's that fucking band that all white girls love and they always talk about? Uh, Dark Horse, White Pony. The Bandit White Pony. The guy's name is... Is that your band? <laughs> His name's Chinko something. Chinko. Chinko. That's not my band, so Chinko believe me. Chinko something. You, somebody in the chat will get it immediately. You guys know. Chinko. It's like, Chinko. Dude, it's got to be deaf... No. Deaf something. Deaf tones. Ah! Deaf, deaf tones. Oh, That's it. Yeah. That's exactly it. Fucking deaf tones, man. Every white girl I meet, they like after they fucking put their underwear back on, they're like... Turn, let's listen to some Deftones. And I'm like, fuck, I have to buy like every Deftones album. Fuck it. helps. Vinyl. To, dude. Yeah. Vinyl's a good choice. Yeah. They, they like always that. Dude, I went out to the vinyl store today and got like, you seem records. like you really care about music for some reason with fucking vinyl. Love it. You know, but I will admit the last time I was high as hell listening to Led Zeppelin three on vinyl with my friends. Meanwhile, it's like 20 fucking 18. And we're in a house done up like it's 1970. There's something wrong with my life. It's stupid. <laughs> you know, that, I I do want you to call me next time. I, I'm actually going to start a suicide hotline. I like but it, it, but it's a different type. It's going to talk you through it, not try to talk. <laughs> Jump. <laughs> Just go ahead. Don't be a pussy. Things go will back be easier now. One more fistful will do it. No more mortgage payments. It's fine. <laughs> run, to, uh. run into the light. <laughs> Those are gonna be some lawsuits out the ass, son. And they they'll approve it in Canada. Do it in Sweden, they'll love you. Yeah, yeah. In Canada, you, you that, that there was that cute girl that was like twenty six, and they freaking uh -huh. killed her ass. Oh man, you got any pictures? Yeah, I don't. Well, let's, she, let's see. Oh, I'm like, we might as well make sure she's cute. You um, know, like it's very tragic when they're attractive. Yeah, it's wow. like such a waste. It's only tragic when they're attractive. <laughs> That's why I like Cecil. He gets me. Cecil's like a real New Yorker, in my opinion. I don't come across too many of those. She looks kind of like Juju. 
Hold on. I come across fucking New Yorkers that tell me about privilege and shit now, and I'm uh, like, and Gigi's kind of like a six, right? So she's oh, she okay, you know. She's 29, 28, 28. Yeah, she, she's gonna age hard. Who is this? This is the girl that had got assisted suicide. 28 years old. She, yeah. she does look similar to my girlfriend. So uh, she heard my band was getting back together, and she just couldn't take it. And she, uh, Juju, I saw you in the chat. You know. <clears throat> Get ready, because uh, the breakup with me is life changing. So yeah, Chad is saying she's mid. Yeah, she's mid, you're, but like, you're, you're, you're mid. See, you'd feel way better if she was like fat. Uh, somebody in the comments said, "Gunner, who the hell's your your back screen?" That's Susan Wojcinski, the former CEO of YouTube. Yeah, dude. looking down on me, <laughs> passing her <laughs> blessings. Yeah, somebody said she, she did the right thing. Somebody. <laughs> Listen, her, her best days are behind her. Let's <laughs> She's heading towards 30. She was single, had no yeah. kids. She just gave up too soon. Yeah, she was just one <laughs> of those girls. It's you know, the issue is is all these women, mm -hmm. they don't they don't need to improve or like um improve themselves in any way, shape, or form as far as a person. Breach, goes. brother, breach. They already fit in from birth all the way until their 30s, and then if they're attractive. Like, if they're or attractive, least, even if they're mid, they're still you if know. they're just thin Gundam. Just yeah, thin is nice, thin. you know. Now you can even be fat and then they get a little bit older and then no one wants to be around them because they suck, you know, and dude, if you find a, a woman that has mm -hmm. a good personality and she's mm -hmm. attractive in any way, shape or form, a six becomes like a nine if she's cool as fuck. Yeah, it's you so hang on to her like grim death. Yeah, it's like Juju. Juju's got a really, really good personality. And he brings it back to Juju. He really saved it. Wow, man. Yeah, I see, I'm going full circle. He's in, he's in the chat. So yeah, that's true. Like, uh, uh, my girlfriend's like a solid four. No, I'm just <laughs> if she if she's got a romper on, she looks pretty slick. I'm about six and a half with a romper, and then she got a good personality, so it bumps it up a little. Yeah, she's you know? oh, she's she's easy, like just easy mm -hmm. going. That's a no. no she's part. easy, Jesus. No, no, no. I just know she's like, like, stay. The uh, older you I'll, get, I'll the more you they are, the better. Uh, she's just you know a pleasure to hang. I've I've hung out with nightmares, and you know. same. Yeah, women that really make you question why you're even here. Um, that was uh, almost every single girl off Tinder was a nightmare. Every single one. No matter if they were Asian, white, fucking Hispanic, they all were the same girl. They're like, I noticed yeah. you. I noticed you left out black. <laughs> well, you know, take so the boy out of, out of Alabama. We have preferences. <laughs> Listen, I'm not gonna give him a shit for it. After Hunter Biden saying no yellow is his way of saying no Asian women, my world was changed. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with the yellow already. <laughs> I know. <laughs> it's oh like I just came out of Taiwan, damn it. Um, William Baker, my boy, says, I'm still wondering if the shell casings had spent primers because I'm, I saved my brass from the range. Um, <clears throat> so the, the spent shell casings that Nick had in his master bedroom were like 22 LR, and he said he didn't even own a 22 LR in the DMs. Um, so I don't know what that's about. Uh, See, now he loses points. Elvis used to just fire off rounds into his ceiling, and I thought that was so cool. Oh, I think Steven Tyler from Aerosmith did it, too. He would have been in good company. Like, I would have owned that if I got caught, and they were like, a Gunham had shell casings. I'm like, yeah, sometimes I got pissed, and I shot the wall because it gave me shit. Dude, that's like, so... If you don't have, if money is not an issue for you, I don't see why you're not firing off rounds and then calling somebody or getting your maid to call somebody to fix the damn roof. If you have like a hundred million dollars, I'll never forget the funnest time in my life. I was driving around a BMW. I was 17 years old in the backwoods and I was driving around backwoods, 17 years old with a BMW and I was drifting around these corners. Probably should have died because I had no idea what I was doing. And I was firing off a damn nine into the sky. It was fucking crazy. Yeah. You, you can't do that around here. Yeah, and I wasn't even, I wasn't even, I hadn't even started drinking or anything yet. I didn't even start drinking for 10 years after that. I was firing off a nine. Dude, and I this remember. guy, one of my friends was making out with this really, really fat girl in the back seat. That was like one of your most special memories. You realize that because you remember it. <laughs> Core memory, man. I remember, I think about it every day. Like, every, time, every time I see every, a beat, That was like your peak. You do realize that now. <laughs> <laughs> it was like all downhill from there. Uh, did you, uh, Gundam, you ever go to Wohop down the 17 Mott Street? The Chinese Hell no. Road? Uh, it's uh, it was like an all night Chinese restaurant, like throughout for the eighties and nineties down, and was it would just go twenty four hours. And uh, back when I don't know, I was in my early twenties. You could go down there and you could buy blockbusters at any time of the night in any month of the year. 
here. You could, and the guy would give it to you in a little brown paper sack, like, you know, a dozen of them, six and six. And we used to be wasted, go to fucking, uh, go to 17 Mott, have food, and then be driving home over like the 59 Street Bridge, lighting them off of cigarettes and throwing them out the fucking sunroof. And it'd be like lightning flashes. And this was like obviously pre 9 11, but it was it was so great how lawless <clears throat> it was back then. Pre 9 11 was a different time for New yeah, York. It was, well, this was pre Giuliani. So it was, it was absolutely fucking insane. I think like, we're getting back to that point though, really. I think so. But like it's, it's way worse now. It's creeping. It's creeping. And it's still not as bad. People forget how bad the 80s were. 80s were like, there was glass. The streets were lined with glass. It was garbage. Every, uh, no, garbage and broken glass from windows. Everybody's radio was ripped out. Every Everybody had, had to put in, signs in the cars that said no radio to keep them from Or lighting. window, door open. You, you know, doors are open. Please don't break glass. And yeah, everybody had, that the criminals can't read. Everybody's walking <laughs> around with their radio in their hand because it was a pullout. Oh, everybody yeah. had Everybody had the club. I remember that. Not even car. from there. That's funny. It was, you yeah, know. There's commercials. <laughs> Yeah, yeah but you would literally take your they had a thing where you would just pop your radio out as you left your car and like take it with you like a briefcase. Yeah. I remember the club. There's commercials for that. Does that's the club right. even work? I think the club would be a better weapon to club someone with. That, that's what it was mostly used for, road rage, basically, is people <laughs> now they had a metal bar. <laughs> so anytime so yeah, there was um, a, a million people were clubbed with a club. <laughs> uh, but um it great marketer. It, the way you would break it is um, you would uh, put you, you would put a like a air fucking what the fuck canned, canned air. air canned air freeze it and you could just break it with a hammer like you damn that is in, easy in, in a minute yeah I'm writing this down God that's why it's got to be applicable if you shit. find a club now it's like an antique. You know what they should I, do? They should huh. they should treat New York like El Salvador and just go so hard on crime. That no, oh. everyone's so afraid to even like crack a fart and I'd fucking love it. God, could you imagine? Dudes just like just screams at like imagine a lady on the register and they just criminals went to jail. God, how do you see how, how fucked up it is? Because they're like, um, you know, they're like, no, you're in the United States. There's like people are mimicking the prison lifestyle, the, the fashion, the, the, the amount. They're like, here, you're not allowed to, as long as you're a prisoner at what, and you're out of the cell, you're not allowed to stand up straight. You, you have to walk like an animal the entire time. You ever watch them being marched? Yeah. They all are yeah. Yeah. at the waist. They're not, if they make eye contact with a guard, they get their ass kicked. If they stand up straight, they get their ass kicked. So like any view of prison life, you are like literally an animal. They're basically stripped down, no shirt, no nothing, and walking humped over with their feet on, eyes on their own feet. So is, there's no like, there's no romanticizing prison life. They're getting a late introduction to what their father should have did, but they never had a father. Dude, my dad did that shit to me all the time. Dude, I would come home every day. I would be like, hey, dad, I want this game. It's Metal Gear Solid 1. I'm not. And then your old. father would your rip your shirt off. Your dad would you rip your shirt off and make you walk bent over at the way. Yeah. No, no. I would I would want the MGS 1, and he'd be like, no. And I'd be like, please. And he'd be like, no. And then I would like, like kind of throw a fit, and he'd be like, wait till we get home. We would get home, and I would think he completely forgot about it. And I would go hide under my bed, and an hour later, he'd come in my room and drag me out of my bed and just beat me mercilessly, mercilessly with a belt. And he did that See? so often, and I'm a great man as a result. He's driving a NASCAR rather than dealing crack. Corporal punishment works. It yeah. works, dude. He beat this one time. He beat me so good, I started blacking out. My mom had to come in and tackle him and pull him off me. He pictures my dad almost committed a murder. <laughs> <laughs> he pictures his dad in the car behind him. That's why he's doing so. <laughs> That's what I do, man. That's yeah. Oh, he's looking in the rear view. <laughs> Coming for me. 